Ross Feingold. He joins us from Taipei. He's an Asia political risk analyst and former chairman of Republicans Abroad. Thanks for being with us, Ross. Okay, we always knew the U.S. supported Taiwan, but given the timing of this weapons sale, I mean, first of all, how much could it further agitate the U.S.-China relationship, and what do you think China's response will be? Well, we'll certainly see, at a minimum, more rhetorical responses. You, you already mentioned uh, some of the uh, statements coming out of China, and we'll see more of that in the coming days, whether it's in the state media or spokespersons for China's foreign ministry or the government agencies that deal with Taiwan-China relations. Uh, separately from the rhetoric uh, or the rhetoric or the rhetorical response, uh, in the water or in the air around Taiwan, China will be expected to continue the scale of military exercises that we've seen throughout 2020, which increasingly uh, puts Taiwan in the position of feeling that it is threatened. And uh, then the U.S. feels that uh, it needs to accelerate the timing of military sales. We have to keep in mind that the U.S. consistently sells weapons to Taiwan, and this is something that the U.S. has done uh, over the past decade. So that by itself is not new. Uh, the Trump administration, compared to earlier U.S. governments or previous governments, has been uh, very confident in, in maintaining or even increasing the pace of those sales. Uh, and, and of course, that does anger China. Uh, so we are in this cycle where China threatens Taiwan. Taiwan feels the need to respond. And one of the ways that it responds is by requesting weapon sales from the U.S., which the U.S. then agrees to. If you can, Ross, tell us a little bit about how you think the Taiwanese people are actually feeling. Do they feel threatened? by what you call the rhetoric or, and it's the pop you know how popular really is this current anti-beijing government in power and also how much are they still watching yeah, their neighbors over in hong kong yeah that's yeah that's an excellent question because uh, clearly the the people of taiwan support this current government it was voted into power in 2016 it was reelected in 2020 so as far as the government's policies towards china uh, that clearly has a high level of popular support. But the interesting thing here is when, when you talk to individuals here in Taipei or throughout the island of Taiwan, you know, they, they're they used to the threats from China. They're used to the rhetoric from Chinese government officials, from uh, Chinese media. So often people don't feel that that any kind of military invasion from China is imminent, uh, but they're, they're cognizant of the threat. Uh, from a U.S. perspective, though, uh, clearly the United States wants Taiwan to take national defense more seriously. The United States wants Taiwan to invest more in its national defense. So there, there is a bit of a gap there where the people here in Taiwan are, are a little more confident that uh, there's no imminent uh, threat of military action by China, and maybe policymakers in the U.S. feel that uh, Taiwan still needs to do more to prepare for its defense. Okay. Ross Feingold joining us live there from Taipei. Thanks so much for that.